Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, now I've been caught this afternoon on, ex on an extended hunt for conkers of all things, which has left me rather short of time. Uh, and I've come back to find that it looks like Mark is suggesting that I solve the new Willy Wonka puzzle in tonight's video, uh, which on the one hand I'm delighted about because Willy Wonka is one of the world's great constructors, but on the other hand, I'm slightly perturbed about because I cannot afford a mammoth length, length video here. I, I mean, I really cannot afford it or this video is not going to go live uh, by 8.30 UK time. So wish me luck. Um, well done to those of you who've managed to solve Scott Strosal's puzzle hunt, uh, which is our monthly reward over on Patreon at the moment. We've now had about 20 correct solutions and the the praise for the puzzle hunt has been stellar so do try it if you haven't already um, and now this also feels like a very good time uh, to remind you that we are in fact on twitter some of you i know don't know that um, but our handle is at cryptic cracking we're not allowed to use at cracking the cryptic because it's too many characters so at cryptic cracking you will find us on twitter uh, it's definitely worth following us there we we publish all sorts of things that are interesting um, now, what are the rules for Willy Wonka's puzzle? Let me read them to you. What This is a little killer thermo, by the way. Um, we've got normal Sudoku rule supply. Along thermometers, digits must increase from the bulb end. So absolutely standard. Uh, so that means, you know, if you put a four in there, this square has to be higher than a four. It doesn't have to be a five, but it has to be higher than a four. So if that was a six, this has to be higher than a six, etc. Um, and we've got some little killer clues, these clues outside the grid, and these are telling you the sum of the digits along the indicated diagonal. Um, now, digits can repeat along those diagonals unless they repeat in one of the three by three boxes. So if we look at this one, you can see that this 49 is saying the yellow cells have to sum up to 49 and you can repeat digits along this diagonal. Obviously, those two digits, you couldn't put eight into both of these cells because that would break the rules of Sudoku in this box, but it would be absolutely fine for, well, that could be a nine, that could be a nine, that could be a nine. You could have a lot of nines and that would necessitate a lot of, well, a lot of very low numbers in the other positions. So that's how the little killer clues work. Do have a go at the puzzle yourselves. It has an enormous rating as usual on Logic Masters Germany. What more would you expect? The way to play is to click the link under the video. I'm using the new software today, so my screen might look very slightly different from the screen that you see, but hopefully you'll see this screen too very soon. And with that, let's get cracking. Um, and have a bit of a flashback to Mitchell Lee's recent thermometer Sudoku, which had very short thermometers. You can see these thermometers, well, that's the longest one, length five, not the most, not the longest thermometer you've ever seen in a thermo. Um, it looks like we've got to do something on the right, doesn't it? These clues are all clustered together. So let's think about that. What have we got here? We've got The yellow cells add to 30, so those squares have got to add up to 15. And we know that because obviously if we looked at the finished solution to the puzzle, those yellow squares there would be all of the digits from 1 to 9 once each. If you add up the digits from 1 to 9, you get 45. So if I know the whole box is 45, but I know those five cells add up to 30, that's how I'm making that arithmetic work for me to give me 15 for these four cells. Now let's add in the 21 as well. So, so those add up to 51 now. 51. Right, okay. That. So this is rather a clever idea, as you'd absolutely expect from Willy Wonka. So, yeah, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Let's think about what these cells have to be. And the answer, I have no idea what these cells are, by the way, but I, ha but I think the point is not to know what these cells are. The point is to realize there is a relationship because of these. I can't, I don't know if I can actually highlight this. Let me try. Let me do that in green. Uh, it makes the, makes the uh, thermometer look a bit disappeary, but hopefully you can just about make out there's a thermometer in these two squares. Now, if we know the green squares add up to 51, but I know this box adds up to 45, then whatever I put into the bulb ends of the, the thermometers, let's just put the digits one and two in for the sake of exposition. What does that tell us 
about those digits at the end of the thermometer. Well, we now know that the green squares plus the bulb are equal to 54, which means that the green squares must equal 54 minus the contents of this box, so 54 minus 45. 54 minus 45 is 9. In other words, these cells at the end of the thermometer, let's colour them in, these two purple cells are always exactly 6 greater than whatever I put in the bulbs of the thermometer. And that is absolutely beautiful. Isn't it, isn't it beautiful? Because hopefully you've, you've all got why it's beautiful, but if these purple cells are 6 greater than what I put in the bulbs, these thermometers must always increase just by one as they as we move along them. So if this square was a two, in order for, to make sure that the purples are exactly six greater in total, we'd have to go three, four, five for this one. This would be a one, obviously. And we'd have to go two, three, four for this one. In fact, this doesn't work. Look, it repeats three in row seven. But but this this is the only way of ensuring that the purples are exactly six greater than whatever we put in the bulbs because the thermometers are of length four so we have to step up in units of one as we move along them and that is a lovely lovely idea and i have no idea what use it is um let's actually just delete everything and come back and see if we can figure out what it means so i know that these i know the thermometers increase by one as we move along them so what is this telling me? Well, it's hugely restricting, but the problem is I don't know. I really don't know much at all about the value of those bulbs. I mean, other than they can't obviously be the same digit, but they could, they could I mean, they could be anything. So there must be a way of somehow This cell is where I think I might look because this cell is it's naturally restricted by the fact that it's halfway along a thermometer so it can't be a 1 or a 9. Now because it's part of a 10 clue it also can't be a 5 and because it's on a thermometer of length 4 it can't be an 8. So this square is a bit restricted. It can be 2, 3, 4, 6 or 7. Yeah, okay. This 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 is this is really this is really cool because whatever number you pick here, it determines a huge amount of the box instantly because it because it forces the thermometer. Look, if this is a two, that has to be an eight. This has to be a perfect thermometer like this, and that breaks immediately because you've got a twenty diagonal there. That has to be three, eight, nine, and it can't be. Now I just wonder if this is so. If we go three here, we, now that doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> if this is seven, you can see this has become four, and we now need to put seven, nine on this diagonal. So that doesn't work. So four is this going to break as well? We go six. This is five. These have to be fifty. These have to be seven and eight. That has to be three. This has to be one, two, and nine. That can't be nine. So this is one. Ah, that one. Hmm. This one might be correct because I can't immediately rule it out. Let's just see if we can get rid of the others. We can. We've got rid of two and three. We we haven't got rid of six and seven. Six is four. Seven here. Ah, seven here. Five here which breaks. That breaks immediately again because the 20 diagonal now needs 13 into those squares but we've used 4, 9, 5, 8 and 6, 7 as possibilities. So that breaks. There's probably an elegant way of doing this mathematically but this is this is the Simon way of doing it. Um, let's try 3 here. This would now have to be 8. This would be 6. That breaks as well because this has to add up to 12 and it can't because 3, 9, 5, 7 and 4, 8 are all impossible. That is beautiful. 
I mean, that is just beautiful. So that has to be four. This has to be six. We have to make a perfect thermometer, which has to look like this. These have to be seven and eight to add up to 15 without using six. These have to be one, two, and nine. And we can't put nine on the bulb of a thermometer. Now, can we do... Yes, we can. This can't be a two because we know this thermometer has to increase in linear steps like that, single steps, and that repeats the four in row eight. So this cannot be a two. This has to be a one, two, three, four. So we can get rid of ones from those squares. The two actually fixes the two and the nine. Okay. Um, and then we come to a grinding halt, but that was that's gorgeous. I mean, this is it's all self-contained as well. It's just a li it's like Willy Wonka thought of a, a lovely idea, and he's just incorporated it into a tiny corner of the Sudoku. We haven't had to use any of the other stuff at all in order to figure this out. Now. Now, where should we look now? What's this done for us? Has it done anything useful? It's limited that bulb a little bit. That can only be, can't be one, two anymore. So it's got to be three, four, five, or six. That square's got to be five, six, or seven, because it can't be four. This has got to be six, seven, or eight. This has got to be seven, eight, or nine. I can't see anything restricting this any further, I'm afraid. So that doesn't look fruitful. This thermometer? Hmm. Oh, actually... Ah, yeah, look at this. This is another... Ah, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful trick again. This is just... It's just another... It's a... It's like a, I don't know what the right way of describing it. It's a beautiful riff in the middle of a song. Um, because these two cells now, what are they? Now the key, and I didn't spot this immediately, is look, two, three, four, one, nine, five are looking at this domino. So the options for these two squares are restricted. It has to be six, seven, and eight. But the point is that this square is on the thermometer. So this has to be greater than whatever I put in that square. Now it can't equal 9. So this has to be a 7 or an 8. This can never be 8. And that creates a 6, 7, 8 triple in the row. That is uh, it's just stunning. It's just such a simple idea. But I don't think it actually gives us anything. But it just, well, it restricts those two cells a bit. But it's just a beautiful thought. So maybe, uh, so there must be now, there must now be a six in one of those two squares. So there must be a six in one of these three squares by Sudoku. There must be a two in one of those squares. Three, four. It'd be nice to, if we could restrict this cell, we would be in clover, but I don't think we can do that yet. So this square... This square's got to be less than... Well, it's got to be... So that's... Hang on, let's do this slowly. This has got to be 1, 2, 3, or 4, or 5 in theory. 2, 3, 4, 5... Six in theory, but six is never going to work. We will, we will see that in a minute. So this is three, four, five, six, or seven. Now, this can't be six. It can't be seven or this breaks. So this is three, four, or five. So this has got to be less than five. This one has got to be less than five. So this is this has actually only got three options. Ah, now look at that square. That's an interesting square because that square mimics those squares. All oh, right, this is very nice. So where does whatever we whatever we put in this square, where does it go in box two of the grid? So whatever we put in this square 
has to go in that cell because these two cannot be 2, 3 and 4. So this square is a 2, 3 or a 4. Which means this square has to be a 5. That's beautiful as well. This square has to be a 5. Why does it have to be a 5? Well, if it's 3 or 4, we have a problem because we know that these two cells contain the same digit. Now, if this is a 3 or a 4, we've then got to put that 3 or 4 into this triple but not here because these two are the same and it's impossible you can't put three or four into this domino because we know the options for these two cells and they are not three and four so this square cannot be a three or a four it must be a five which means five is in one of those cells it means five is in one of these cells this five unfortunately doesn't fix our thermometer so we're not We're not able to figure that out yet, so so now I am stuck. What what this five that that feels like it it was important to realise this because this two three four idea is so beautiful. It's almost like this thermometer has been put in in order to force this idea with the two three four and then the five. And when you're faced with a world class constructor and Willy Wonka is most certainly that your spider senses should tingle at moments like this why is this important why is it important that the five is here is it this diagonal this 22 diagonal is that so the 22 diagonal is reaching into this So mm, I don't think it's that important though because if we look at what's available to go into this diagonal you can still put a 1 on this diagonal. You could put 1 and 5 is 6. You could put 7 there. So we've got 13. So these two squares have to be 9 9 or less. It doesn't seem immensely power. Maybe this one. My phone's buzzing at me. It's probably Mark um, asking how I'm getting on with the puzzle he sent me. Um, ah, maybe this. Yeah, let's look at this diagonal. Actually, I think this is this looks actually more restricted than the 22 because it's longer and it's got some high digits on it already. So. Yeah, okay, this there's a simple idea here. If this is seven and this this if this is seven, that has to be nine because it's on the thermometer. So those would add up to sixteen. Now these four squares would have to add up to seven, therefore, and that's impossible. Because we could put one in here, and in theory we could put one, two, three there. These would now add up to seven, but this cell would have no value because it couldn't now be the one, two, three that we've put in this um on this diagonal. So we can, oh, whoopsie. So we can say that this is not a seven, actually. That's not a seven. So this is now not a six. If, so let's, let's think about this. So what is the absolute, if we put the minimums along here, we'd go five, seven, one. So 571 is 13. The maximum value of those squares, therefore, is 10. And what do we get in that direction? So if we had 517 here, we'd have 39. So, we, so these two squares have got to be 9 or lower. These squares have got to be 10 or lower. Right. Ah, this is this is the next part. This is it's this is the great thing about brilliant constructors. Is it's we are on a journey. It's just all deliberate because now look at this box, box four. If the purples have to be ten maximum and the blues have to be nine maximum, I think that was the way round. Then these cells together are a maximum of nineteen. But what's the 
absolute minimum, I can make six different cells. If I add this one in as well, these are all obviously different numbers. Now the absolute minimum I can make six different numbers is 21. So this square here can, it can never be one because then I can't make those add up to enough. So this is not one, this is not two. And we've only got now one degree of freedom because 19, this is, these six cells together are either, either adding up to 21 or 22. Oh, I thought I'd spotted something then. I'm just wondering actually, look, if that's... Ah, this is, in, this is interesting. If that's a one, I can't put one five on this diagonal now because look, <laughs> I've got one and five pointing at this square. If this is one therefore, how on earth do I get this to work? I can put one here. This square has to now be, it can't be five because of this five. So it's got to be, and we've got one degree of freedom. So I can't go up higher than, I can't go up higher than six, can I? But if I go six, this is amazing. If I go six here, the effect of this thermometer is to turn this one into an eight because this is a seven. That's a seven. That's an eight. And now I've broken it because I've used up two degrees of freedom. So, yeah, I think I have because when I first looked at this, I thought I could put one, five, seven on this diagonal. One, five and seven is 13. But now I'm thinking I can only put one, six, eight on the diagonal which is 15, which makes this impossible. In fact, I'm almost better off not putting six there because putting six there forces seven, eight here. Whereas if I put seven here, it's still possible to put seven here, but it doesn't matter. I've, I've, I've still used up my two degrees of freedom. Although I've kept this cell down, this one has gone up by two and it can only go up by one. This cannot be a one. That is amazing, that the way that this thermometer, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just amazing, it, it, full stop. You just can't put a one in this square. By putting a one in this square, you take two degrees of freedom from those three squares because of the way it interacts with this thermometer and this five clue. So this is not one. Once this is not one, we've used up our degree of freedom by changing it to a two, so now, now the whole of the rest of this has to be stone cold minimums and hopefully it will work otherwise I've made an error <laughs> let's see so I think that has to be a seven this has to be a five this has to be a one five pair which has to be one five there that that has to be stone cold minimum now this is a six this is an eight now I think and this this is going to have to be three because two is not going to be enough. Let's check. So here we've got 14. So we know those, the purples have to add up to nine. Here we've got 13. So these also have to add up to nine. Yeah. Okay. So the purples and the blues add up to nine, which is 18. I can't put two in here because that would imply that six different cells can add up to 20, which they can't. One, two, three, four, five, and six add up to 21. So this has to be a three. This is a four, therefore. These add up to nine, not using three. So they can't be two, three, four, or one, three, five. These are one, two, six. These two squares are the balance, which is four and five. QED, that is quite gorgeous. The four here fixes the four and the five. There's a four in one of those two squares, look. In fact, oh, in fact, there's a five in one of those two squares as well. Look, which by Sudoku, these fives are interacting exactly the same way. These, there must be a seven in one of those squares because of this seven. Uh, 
these two squares are... Oh, these two squares are 7 and 9, and there's a 7 there. So we can actually do that. That's 7, that's 9, that's 7, that's 8. This for me... We, I, I mean, it's amazing. We're actually... Oh, whoopsie. We're making a lot of good progress all of a sudden. We can delete all this because we actually know the values of these squares. This one is 5, 6, and 8. And that can't be 5. These ones are 1, 2, and 9. And bah, we don't know anything. Um, 6 over here means that's not 6. This square's got to be 8 or 9. These are 7, 8, or 9. These squares have got to be 3, 8, or 9. Um, 3 in this box is a bit restricted. It's got to go in one of those two cells. So 3 in this box is in one of two positions. This can't... Oh, look, the 4s. We can just tidy up that. We, we looked at that earlier. So we've got all sorts of 4s able to be pencil marked around the grid. That can't be 5 anymore. This has to lie between 5 and 7, so... Another knowledge problem from cracking the cryptic, it's a six. These squares, ah, these squares are now one, two, and three. So this has to be the three, because we've worked out the three was in one of those two, and we now know it's in this column as well. So the only position that meets both of those criteria is this one. One, two, pair now in row six. Is... Well, it might be useful, but I'm not seeing how. There's got to be... There's no 5 in those squares, but there must be a 1. So, let's just take stock. How are we doing? We have... We've used up these three clues. We've used up these two clues. There must be a 6 in one of those two cells. We've not used the 45 clues at all. And we've not used this thermometer at all. Now this thermometer... Is this restricted? At... Well, maybe it's a tiny bit restricted. I can see I can't put a 7 anywhere on it. I'm not sure if that's that rules a 6 out of the bulb end. Ah, yeah, okay. There's the bulb end is more restricted than I first thought because it can't. We can't put six here because if we do, we need a seven exactly in this position in order to keep this to nine or less. So this is not six. Once this is not six, it also can't be five and four. So the only options therefore are one, two, and three in this position, which means this square, which can't be three or four, that can be two, five. Can it be 6? I think it can be 6. It can't be 7. It can't be 8 or 9. So 2, 5, 6 into this square. This one also can't be 3, look. So this one can be 4, 5, 6 or 8. Is there any reason that any of those aren't possible? Um... Well, there might be, but I'm not seeing what they are. Six. I don't know. Uh, so this one has got to be... Uh, it's got to be higher than f four, so it's got to be five, six. Can't be eight or nine. So I think in a minute we're going to have to look at these 49 clues. It doesn't feel like I'm going to... I've got a seven, eight, nine triple actually, look. Maybe I can do more in this row. I need one, two, and six. Yeah, these squares here have got to be one, two, and six. That one is a six, therefore, because it can't be a one or a two. So actually, we get to tidy up the sixes. That means this square is a six. Ah, ooh, six can't go here. So if six can't go here, 
That means absolutely nothing for that one. Um, hmm. Okay. <laughs> it really doesn't. <laughs> oh dear. But I suppose this one is limited to two or five. I think I'm missing something about maybe it's this maybe it's four four five six four five six eight nine so I've almost got a quintuple but not quite is it this square no okay I'm starting to struggle now oh dear um, let's have a look at Let's have a look at this diagonal because I've got two low digits on it here. So this diagonal has got to be 49 altogether. And we've got 13, we've got 18 so far. So these squares here have got to add up to 31. That is quite high actually. That is quite high. So, ah, so this can't be a three. That's absolutely impossible. If this was a three, I'd have to put more than three nines into those squares. So this is three. So three definitely lives in one of those cells. And coming back here. Um, I'm just trying to see whether there's any restriction on any of these cells that is immediately obvious um, the answer is I can't see anything useful um, there must be a three in one of those two cells so in this column we need one seven eight and nine so these these are seven eight and nine still no This square is a seven or a nine. These squares are one, seven, eight. Well, one, eight or nine, because there's a seven in the box. So we're getting to the point where there's an, an awful lot of pencil marks, but not a lot of traction, which means I'm probably not thinking about this quite the right way. Um, that can't be a six. I'm not sure, I suppose. It's, I'm torn between looking at the 49 diagonal which might be the best way forward, or is there something we can do with Sudoku here? Don't know. Uh, okay, let's come back to this diagonal. What have we got here? We've got I've got to put 31 into these squares. Now does that mean hmm. two nines here would be so if these were both nines, I'd still have to make those two squares add up to 13 at least. So this square here, even if this is an 8, this has to be at least equal to 5, and it can't be 5 or 6 actually. So that square is a 7, 8 or 9, believe it or not. So these have to add up to at least 13. And that's on the basis those two are both nine. Ah, now that's interesting. Look at this cell. If this cell is equal to nine, you can't put a nine in either of those cells because if a nine here forces that to be nine and now neither of those squares can be a nine because there's two nines pointing at them. So if this is 9, the best I can do here is 7, 8, 15. Ah, breaks. Nice. So if this is 9, let's just show that slowly. That has to be 9. Now these two squares cannot be 9. So I can put 7 in there and 8 in there as a maximum. That's 15. These two have to therefore add up to 16. 
and they can't because you can't put two eights in the box and this cannot be a seven or a nine so all of that is a good deduction it means well actually maybe it's not it means that's an that it means that's an eight it means this is a one eight it means there's no eights here It means there's no, it means this is an eight, obviously. It means there's an eight in one of these two cells. It means that these still absolutely can be two nines and probably are two nines. Oh dear, it's, I think it's nearly cracking. Are you nearly cracking? So let's have a look at the other diagonal then. That can't be eight actually look let's just tidy up that ink oh this eight here rules out eight from both of those oh ah there you go so if this if this can't be eight now oh it doesn't matter oh because because we'd already had five and six ruled out from there bother so this not being eight is not going to affect anything are we serious Don't believe it. Um, okay. Right, okay, so sorry, that I don't think that is. Ah, but maybe. So the maximum now I can. Ah, yeah, okay, look. If I make this a six, this has to be a nine, which means this can't be a nine. So the maximum value of those squares is 14. I can put six, eight or five, nine in. If these are 14 and I need 31 altogether, that that right okay so I can't put a 7 in either of those squares if I put a 7 in either of those squares I get 16 into these squares which means I need 15 into those squares and I can't get it because 6 9 is not a possible entry because of the thermometer good grief so these are both 9 this is 7 and surely that helps does it 18 these now have to add up to 13 is there a way of restricting this further I'm sure that there are many good ways of doing it but I I haven't really looked at this other diagonal yet either I should do that now let's look at this one so here we've got 10 11 26 so those squares have got to add up to 23 ah okay so can this be anything other than 9 no it can't it's beautiful again the way that it interacts with the thermometer because if this is not 9 this has to be two because it can't be five then because this would have to be six or five so if this is anything other than nine the best i do in those two squares is two six and that even if i add another two in there i only get to ten and i need to get to over twenty so this has to be an enormous number so this is nine good so if that's nine this is not nine I need these to be 13 so this is not 4 anymore which means this is 4 <laughs> I'm slowly getting there um, 4 must be in one ah that gives me that one and it means 4 is in one of these two squares though these two aren't 3 anymore this 3 gives me the 3 and the 9 that means there's a 9 in one of those two 2 7 and 8 this nine does it do ah it's so close to cracking crack crack you devil come on uh nine can go, go there 
Um, right, we're going to have to come back to this diagonal again. So 24, 25, 35. 14 into these squares now. So if this is 2, we can't get there. This has to be 5. That has to be 6. That has to be 8 now. That fixes that one as 7. These do add to 13, so I think this is looking good. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> ah! Come back. Right, 7 here, 9 here. That's a 9 now. This becomes 1, 2. This is 8, so this is 6. This is 5. This square has to be a 1 by Sudoku. That gives me the 1 and the 2. This square has to now be a 2, in fact, which gives me the 2 and the 1. Those two squares have got to be 3 and 8, which is now fixed. Now, hopefully, this, this diagonal is working. Shall we check it? We've got 22, 30, 40, 48. So we have to put a 1 in. 1, 2. And in fact, that's working anyway. Looking at this row, we could have got it, but we've just checked it. That now does add to 49. I've checked that one because I needed 13 there. And everything now is going to flow. It's just, a, it's just a brilliant puzzle, isn't it? It really is. It's full of these stunning little ideas um, that just fill your heart with joy. It really is superb. Four. Now that square should be fill in -able. Fill in -able. Um, One, one, two. Must need a 2 and an 8 there. Still need an 8 here. Looks like that should be a 9. Check. Yes, that's how to solve it. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Took me longer than I... Well, actually, it took me longer than an average video, but it didn't take me long for a Willy Wonka, and that's a relief. Um, so, yeah. I mean, let's just take a moment to admire this, though. It sort of starts off with this idea in the bottom right, which is self-contained and beautiful around the length of these thermometers. I think that does now then force you into this logic here, which is gorgeous, using this thermometer and the idea that these two cells see those six cells. So this triple is then forced. You then get a restriction here that allows you to use this two, three, four triple to limit this value. You then we then got the 5, didn't we? Yeah, because this then couldn't be a 3 or a 4 because that would repeat. And this 5 was actually so critical to the logic on the 22 and the 23 because it was, it was, it was the fact that if this was a 1, you couldn't then put 1, 5 on this diagonal that sort of crystallized the whole thinking around this, this cage here. It's just stunning. And then at the end, you've got the 249s tidying things up. And I'm sure there was a quicker way of doing that than the way I did it, but I did it in the end. Thanks for watching. And of course, we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic in which Mark, I believe, is going to show you how to cheat at Sudoku. Say no more.